the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to our continuation of Series 19. This one looking at the players of the 2023 Asian Cup due to be played in January 2024. This episode is looking at the players of China. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 19 on the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, which is played in uh, January 2024. This episode covers China's players. And we are doing this media cast in two parts. So part one is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Uh, we think we went into too much detail in previous player media casts we've done. So we're aiming for a lighter, kind of more listener-friendly narrative version uh, this time. Um, part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad is selected. And we think that will be in late December. Uh, so at that time, we will go back over our list and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover some things like injuries, surprise selections, and so on. And we'll talk about that more at the uh, end. Uh, we have made a separate video on what we'll be covering over the next nine months. Uh, YouTube watchers can see the link to that on the screen right now, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. In short, we're focusing on the Asian and African Cups, uh, both of them taking place in early 2024. And we have also started our coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying. Uh, this episode will have three parts. Section one, where we uh, give and discuss uh, some general information on the team. Uh, section two is the main part, where we look at the candidates, uh, the main candidates in each position. There are uh, kind of players who have popped up on the bench over the last uh, year or two uh, that we're going to leave off the squad unless they're kind of named to the final squad, basically. And section three, uh, we will talk about any closing thoughts and uh, preview part two in a bit more detail. Let's begin then. And uh, we're going to start with uh, some general information about the team. So a couple of comments on the squad. Uh, the first one is that all players except one are playing with clubs in China. Uh, there is one defender who's with Turkish club, uh, Gensai Bergli. And, um, this was not always the case, as China has had some players with teams abroad in the past. And uh, the Chinese league was growing in strength and bringing in foreign talent, sometimes top talent uh, from other countries. But all of that uh, seems to be in decline. Uh, their league does seem to be weakening, and none of their teams have made it to the final stage of the AFC uh, Club Champions League uh, in the last two editions. Whereas in the, 20, uh, in the 2010s, uh, there were always two or three clubs kind of making it to the, uh, the final stages there. Um, one other comment on the, uh, on the uh, squad is uh, retired players. We'll take a look at some of the big names uh, who have retired. Uh, one is Gao Lin. And uh, Gao Lin... Um, I think I did read uh, officially that he had retired. Anyway, 114 caps and 24 goals. And uh, he last appeared in the Asian Cup in 2019, where he was a starter. The next one is uh, Zheng Ji. And um, I don't have official confirmation that he is retired, but he also last appeared in the Asian Cup in 2019, where he was a... Uh, where he was the captain of the team. And he had 111 caps for China and uh, 15 goals uh, for them. And finally, uh, Yang Zhu, uh, Yang Zhu, sorry. And uh, he actually did not take part in the 2019 Asian Cup. Um, but he did have 60 caps for China and 33 goals 
uh, for them, um, and he is no longer uh, an option for them. Um, yeah, so let's uh, move on to their recent games, and uh, we're going to go back to the beginning of 2022. So uh, they had uh, World Cup qualifiers uh, in 2022 uh, from January to March, so finishing off 2022 World Cup qualifying there. Uh, but there have been quite a few changes to the squad uh, since then, so we're not going to go back actually that far uh, too much. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next thing they played was uh, very slim pickings in 2022. The only other thing they played was in the East Asian Football Championship. That's the uh, local tournament where they, China and uh, they, Japan and South Korea receive automatic qualification. And I will say at this point that they did bring a few of their starters. Uh, I noticed central defenders uh, they brought to the cup, but it was mostly the under-21 team there, and not many of those players have continued on uh, to uh, the squad. Uh, and finally, in 2023, uh, we have a lot of friendlies, two in March, two in June, two in September, two in October. Uh, friendlies, I won't go through the teams. Uh, so they've been kind of uh, building their squad, through that, and more significant than the results uh, for this for this media cast are the formations that they used. So we'll go uh, take a look at the formations here. For the 2022 World Cup qualifiers, at least the last couple of games, they had uh, five uh, five at the back, a five four one formation. So that's a very defensive formation. They were playing Japan, which is uh, you know a team that you need to defend against. Uh, but they were also playing Vietnam, uh, which is a, a bit of a surprisingly defensive formation for Vietnam. East Asian Football Championship, I think the formations there don't matter, so we'll move on to the friendlies. Um, so this was in March 2023 against New Zealand, uh, where they had four at the back, so two different formations, but... Um, the key point there is uh, four players at the back. But from uh, from June all the way to October, they had uh, different formations with three central defenders at the back. And the, uh, the um, left back and right back basically moved up to a left wing and right wing position quite far up the field. So uh, that did alter a little bit. It was a 3-4-2-1 in June and September, and then it was a, a quite an odd formation in October, a 3-5-1-1. I'll just pause to let you envision that. Uh, three at the back, a straight line of five midfielders, then one uh, one and one, so a supporting forward and a, and a forward. Uh, in the second game, it was a 3-2-2-2-1. So they're kind of experimenting, but the key point there is really uh, three three central defenders at the back, and one forward in both formations there. Okay, so uh, let's move on to their upcoming games. They have a couple of big ones coming up in November. We are doing this media cast, by the way, in uh, late October. And the uh, games are on November 15th. They play China and, sorry, they play Thailand. And on November 20th, they play South Korea, a really big game, uh, their first games of World Cup 2026 qualifying there. So I'll just, uh, sorry, repeat that by putting the graphics up there. So they are World Cup 2026 qualifiers uh, being played in November 2023. And the first one is against Thailand and Sorry, the second one against South Korea. So uh, big games there, and they should be using their best players, uh, we expect. So that may uh, shed a little bit of light on who they are going to use for the Asian Cup. All right, that's the end of part one. And let's move on to part two, where we take a look at uh, the candidates for China um, for China's team. So the team is currently managed now 
by uh, Alexander Yankovic. And uh, for those looking at the screen here, uh, <coughs> excuse me, if the name is in uh, gray like it is for Alexander Yankovic, it means they haven't uh, taken part in an in a international tournament. If it's in black, it means they have. Okay, so uh, Alexander Jankovic is a Serbian manager, and uh, he became manager of the national team since 2022, so basically took them through those um, uh, local EAFF, East Asia Football uh, Tournament games. Uh, but he's been with the team a bit longer than that. He was appointed coach of the China Olympic team in 2021, and then he was named... Uh, the under-23 coach uh, uh, somewhat later. Uh, he became interim coach of the China team, uh, China senior team, uh, for that tournament in July 2023. And um, I think I said uh, made up mostly of under-21 players before, but it uh, should be under-23 players. Uh, but as I said, some of the uh, senior players uh, also joined. Now, China has uh, been having trouble with the coach. If you recall, their coach for the 2019 Asian Cup was uh, Marcel Lippi, uh, the uh, uh, Marcello Lippi, the uh, fairly famous Italian coach. But uh, since then, uh, he he, uh, uh, I don't, I think his contract ended in 2019 rather than him being fired. Anyway, since then, they've gone through uh, three different coaches. So Canavero in 2019. Uh, Lippi briefly came back. I I'm recalling now that there was some disagreement over the contract. Anyway, he came back but didn't last long. And then Li Tai and Li Xiaopeng both lasted uh, about a year until Jankovic took over in 2022. So think of it as uh, the summer of 2022. So he's been uh, playing those eight friendlies and uh, building his team. And we'll start looking at that team, uh, starting with goalkeepers. So uh, I'll begin by kind of going through the candidates and then uh, try to make a bit of a narrative out of it. So the definite candidate here is Yang Junling. Um, a likely candidate is Wang uh, Dale, and we have a possible candidate in Liu, uh, Liu Jianzu, and a possible but unlikely candidate in Ma Zhen, and finally, um, a, we'll, we'll call him seemingly off the squad, uh, Han Jiaki. So we'll go through those and give a little bit of information about them. Um, this actually is quite clear cut. Uh, Yan Jun Ling started all of the games basically uh, over the uh, over the last two years, uh, while Wang Dale, uh, Wang Dale, and Liu Jianzu were the backup keepers all along. Uh, Wang Dele, probably the second string keeper, and Liu Jianzhu, the third string keeper. However, there was a little glitch uh, recently. Suddenly, uh, Liu Jianzhu was not selected for the October games, and he was replaced by Ma Zhen for the first of these. But uh, for the second of them, no one replaced him. Uh, they went with two keepers. So um, it's possible that Ma Zhen is kind of making a bid uh, to be the third string keeper, or it's possible that maybe Liu Jianzhu is sick or something, and uh, they just brought Ma Zhen in. Uh, Han Jiaqi at the bottom there. Well, we'll go through the players and then talk about them. So, uh, Yan Juling, uh, since uh, 2014, he's been with China, and he was uh, the starting keeper in the 2019 Asian Cup. So, really established in that position, uh, 48 caps he has for the national team. Uh, Wang Dele was actually the uh, starting keeper in the 2015 Asian Cup. So he has 31 caps for the national team. By the time the Asian Cup uh, 2019 rolled around, he was the uh, uh, backup keeper with Yan Zhu Ling taking over. So uh, I think he has not played any game 
uh, since January 2022, but he's been on the bench all the time, except he came in for five minutes as a substitute uh, for one of their 15 games since January 2022. Uh, Liu Zhangzhou, uh, Jian Liu uh, only has three caps for the national team and has uh, been with the team since 2019, uh, sitting on the bench mostly. Uh, and then Ma Zhen, who uh, came in for that one game uh, recently in October, uh, is brand new to the squad. He is uh, 25 years old. And uh, but he got his first appearance right there in October 2023 on the bench. And I've mentioned uh, Han Jia uh, he was the keeper in the uh, EAFF Cup. Um, uh, but those were his only games, he hasn't been called up otherwise. So maybe if uh, one of these players gets injured, uh, he'll come back into the picture. But he doesn't seem to be uh, a consideration. All right, let's move on to the uh, defenders, and we will begin with uh, central defenders here. So uh, once again, we'll introduce the candidates. And the first one we have is a definite candidate in uh, Jiang Guangtai, but actually he is a British-born and English-born uh, player, born in Liverpool, I think. And uh, his English name is uh, Ty uh, Tyus Browning. Uh, but I'm going to call him Zhang Guangtai because that is his Chinese name and uh, we are talking about a uh, China team. Uh, a definite candidate and we'll come back and introduce him a little bit. Uh, a likely candidate is Zhu uh, Chenji. Zhu Chenji and uh, we have three possible candidates in Wu Xiaokong and Gao Zhunyi and Wei Zhen. And uh, we're also, uh, no, we'll, uh, uh, we'll just mention a couple of names that might be possible. We're, we're not going to talk much about them. Uh, Li Ang, uh, Liu Yiming, and I think that's all we'll have. We have a couple of players who seem to be off the squad, but uh, we're not going to introduce those again. We will if they come back into the squad. So let's go back to the beginning and take a look at uh, Jiang Guangtai. That's Tyus Browning. So he is uh, born of a um, black father and a Cantonese mother, uh, I think it is. And he did uh, play in England. Uh, he was born in England and played with the Everton Youth Club and then a couple of clubs in England before moving to China in 2019. And of course, he was eligible for the Chinese team and he's been playing with them since 2021 with 16 caps and one goal. So we consider him a definite candidate uh, as a central defender. When they use two defenders, it's usually uh, him, Xiao, uh, Xiang Guangtai, and the next candidate, Zhu Chenji. When they use three candidates, it could be one of the players we'll introduce a bit later, or it could be one of the outside backs, uh, the right back or the left back, uh, coming in to play uh, in central defense, or even a defensive midfielder coming back into that three-man uh, defense, three-man central defense. Anyway, the likely candidate is uh, Zhu uh, Chenji, and he's been with the team since 2019 uh, with 20 caps. And neither of these two players, though, uh, our definite or likely candidate, were involved with the uh, 2019 Asian Cup. So we have a big uh, change, a big change at the back here. Uh, Wu Xiaokong has been with the team just since 2022 and has three caps. And um, he started four of their uh, 11 games. Um, he first appeared on the bench in the uh, EF, EAFF Cup there, the local cup. And uh, since then started four of their remaining 11 games. Uh, subbed in for two and with the under-21 uh, team for three of them. Uh, so uh, kind of uh, a possible candidate and of course they will bring five or six uh, central defenders so uh, in with a pretty good shout but probably not as a starter. Uh, Gao Zhuni is actually um, 
uh, also a possible candidate. I don't know what I was planning to say there. He sometimes uh, plays as the left central defender when it's a three-man back uh, lineup. So um, Gao Juni uh, started five of their 15 games over the last two years, uh, but he was not selected for 10 others, including the last three matches. So maybe making his way out of the picture there. And finally, the possible candidate, uh, Wei Zhen, uh, brand new to the team since 2023, uh, with just uh, two caps there, also not selected for the October games. So I'm um, not sure who they're going to bring in here. We do have a couple of um, possible but unlikely candidates in Li Ang and Liu Yiming. We won't go into detail on them. Um, uh, but then the other possibility, uh, if these people aren't selected, is that they use players like Zhang Ning Pen, uh, who's normally the right back, or he's coded as a right back, but he also comes in actually quite often to that three-man back line. Uh, so we consider him uh, a possible starter, but we'll actually get to him when we talk about the uh, right back. So uh, in review, the starters are uh, Jiang Guangtai and uh, Zhu Chenji. Uh, if it's a two-man defense, if it's a three-man, uh, it could be uh, one of the following possible candidates, Wu Xiaokong, Gao Junyi, or Wei Zhen. Uh, we consider those kind of uh, substitutes, uh, but may be used in a three-man backline, or else players from other positions will come into that backline. Okay, let's move on to left backs, and uh, I'll introduce the candidates. So we have uh, Liu Yang. I'll say right now that this is kind of an unsettled position, so uh, there's no kind of uh, uh, definite candidate here, but Liu Zhang seems the most likely, uh, and we have him as likely. Uh, uh, Li Lei is a possible candidate, and also Li Shui, uh, possible candidates. And again, we have a couple of other uh, um, players who have not been on the squad enough for us to get into here, but we will introduce them uh, uh, in the in the part two of the podcast if they make it to the final squad. So uh, Liu Yang seems to be the most likely starter, but he is fairly often replaced uh, by the two possible candidates who we'll introduce here. Uh, and we think about, uh, we think usually two or possibly three left backs will be selected for the squad. So Liu Yang uh, was a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup, and he's been with the team since 2018 and has 17 caps. So he actually was off the team, though, for more than two years um, when he came back in January of 2022, and he started six of their 15 games there. Uh, so as, as I mentioned, not... Uh, certainly not um, uh, kind of a staple in the position. Um, actually, Li Lei uh, has five appearances, and all of them were over the last five games, so he seemed to be making a bid uh, for this uh, spot, for the starting position here. And uh, he's been with the team since 2019, but only has seven caps. But Li Lei uh, actually... Uh, looking the most likely candidate recently. Uh, Li Shui uh, might have been a candidate, but um, he suffered an injury. It's called a cervical spine injury. That sounds quite serious. And he's been out for the last three matches. That might be an injury that extends into the cup. And he, uh, he only has one cap for the team, but he has been uh, on the bench uh, recently. But of course, uh, the spine injury uh, puts a big question mark on that. So um, I'll just also mention that these uh, left backs uh, in the three-man central defense system, they usually play as wingers. Uh, okay, let's move on to the right backs. I'm kind of curious to see who will be a left back because there doesn't seem a firm candidate there. So I wouldn't be surprised if in part two we see a new name 
uh, coming in there. Anyway, let's go on to the right back. We've already mentioned uh, Zhang Lin-Pen, as, uh, and we have him as a likely candidate. He's a real veteran. Uh, and possible candidates, uh, Sun Gao Wen and he Yu Peng, uh, both possible candidates. And then um, I'll just mention uh, three names. No, I'll wait uh, until the end uh, before I just throw out those names because they're possible but unlikely. Uh, Zhang Lin Pen. Uh, will almost certainly be uh, selected whether he plays as a central defender or a, route, uh, a right defender. Uh, however, um, he looked like a definite candidate until he wasn't selected for the last two matches in October, so we had to move him down a lot too likely. Um, here too, the players uh, have been playing on the right wing. So sometimes we'll get two of these players on the field, uh, Zhang Lin Pen in the central defense, and then uh, one of the others, one of the possible candidates playing not uh, as a left back, uh, sorry, not as a right back, but as a uh, right winger. So let me tell you a bit about Zhao Lin Pen. He's been with the uh, national team since 2019, and he recently passed his century of caps. So he has 102 caps. And he's been uh, with uh, the team in tournaments since 2011. He was a starter in the 2011 and 2015 Asian Cups and in the 2019 Cups. So a real veteran in uh, Zhang Lin Pen. Uh, he, by the way, is 34 years old. Uh, okay, um, Sun Gao Wen is actually listed as a left back, but he has lined up as a right winger in all three of his caps. So he only has three caps. And uh, I guess we maybe need to see him play more to actually clarify what his position is. Uh, anyway, Sun uh, Gao Wen. Uh, he was uh, started, uh, okay, so after his first appearance in March 2023, he started three of their remaining eight games. He was subbed in for one and on the bench for two others. However, he too also was not selected for the October games. So those October games uh, throwing a bit of a wrench in the works as far as predicting the, the squad for the Asian Cup. Uh, the one who was selected for the last two games was uh, he, or oh, I think it's pronounced He Yu, Yu Peng. So He Yu Peng um, got his start in the July 2022 uh, EAFF Cup, the East Asian Cup there. And uh, he started three of their remaining 11 games uh, to uh, up until now. He was with the under-23 team for four of those. Uh, and subbed in for two, and not selected for two others. But he did come in and play the last two matches. So perhaps he is making a late bid uh, for the position. We'll have to see. Okay, and then we have three possible but unlikely candidates. I'm just going to throw out their names for now, and then pick them up uh, if they if they make the final squad. We'll introduce them in part two. So the first one is Deng Han Wen. And the second is Shinar uh, uh, Yelian. And the third, third one uh, is uh, Ming Qian. So I think I pronounced one of those wrong, so I'll just repeat them. Uh, Deng Han Wen, Shinar uh, Yeljan, and Ming Qian. I'm probably butchering those names. Uh, I speak Korean, but not Chinese. Uh, Okay, and uh, as mentioned, we'll come back to those in part two if they become significant. Okay, and now uh, let's move on to the midfield. And uh, we're going to begin with a, a versatile midfielder who's hard to uh, place, and that is a possible candidate in uh, Dei Wei Sun. Um, Dei Wei Sun is coded as a defensive midfielder, but actually he uh, has not really played there. Uh, he has played as an attacking midfielder and a right winger in his two starts. And uh, he was on the 22 uh, East Asian football uh, team in July 2022 and seemed to be uh, just limited to that. 
uh, until he returned in October 2023 for one substitute and one bench appearance. So uh, he actually played for Wolverhampton in England um, in two, 2019 and uh, 20. He didn't actually play any games for them, but he was on the squad. And uh, as we said, he returned in uh, October. So um, we're going to see a few players who actually did. Uh, so he's kind of back on the list as a possible candidate. Let's move on to uh, defensive midfielders. And um, actually, China's formation does not actually have, uh, or does not often have a defensive midfielder position uh, in their formation. And even when they do, it's often a central midfielder who plays the position. So we're kind of going to do these sections together. Uh, but that makes for too many players, so... Um, even though there's no real de differentiation between defensive and central midfielders, we're going to go through the, the two sets of players according to their uh, their listed position or their designated uh, position, although they don't necessarily uh, stay in those positions, as we've seen with Dei Wade Sun. So we have uh, two likely players coded as uh, defensive midfielders, uh, playing more as uh, central midfielders, really. But this one, uh, first one, is Li Ke. That's his Chinese name. His uh, uh, Western name is Nico Yanaris, and we'll come back to talk about him. Uh, the other likely candidate is Wang Shangwan, um, uh, also coded as a defensive midfielder. Um, we have uh, three possible candidates. The first one is actually coded as a left back, but he's been playing in various positions, but most often as a defensive midfielder. And that is a uh, 40, 34 uh, year old Wang Shen Chao um, there. And we'll come back to him too. Next one is Gao Qianyi. And the third one is Zhang Jiaqi. Okay, so let's take a bit of a closer look at these players. So uh, Li Ke, or Nico Yanaris, was born in England. Uh, interestingly, he was also eligible to play for Greece and Cyprus, but um, uh, he moved to China uh, in 2019, having played in England, actually for Brentford uh, for a long time, and was even with Arsenal. Uh, he only played one game for Arsenal. Um, Lee Ke and a likely candidate because uh, after uh, being out for almost uh, two and a half years, uh, a lot of that time was with a pinched nerve injury. Uh, he came back in September 2023 and started all four of their remaining games. So that's why we see him as a likely candidate here. Uh, next is Wang Shang, uh, Wang Shang Yuan. And uh, he uh, has been on the team since 2019, but with just five caps. But he did start uh, four games, including the last two uh, of their 15 games over the last couple of years, and was uh, subbed in for two and on the bench for two. I think uh, we have him as likely because his participation has, uh, uh, participation has been a bit more recent. Uh, next, the possible candidates, Wang Shen Zhao. Been on the team since 2017 and has 19 caps. Uh, none of these guys have uh, played in the 2019 Asian Cup. Uh, so they're all new. And Wang Shen Chao was uh, actually not eligible for the Asian Cup in 2019 because in 2018, he received a year ban for taking a necklace out of his sock and wearing it. You are not allowed to wear jewelry on the field. Uh, so that was, uh, anyway, he's back and a possible candidate here. Gao Qianyi uh, returned after one and a half years. Uh, he was with the under-23 team uh, for a bit. He returned in October uh, 2023 um, to sub into two games. So he would be a substitute, um, just one cap for him. And uh, Zhang Jiaqi, uh, also a possible candidate. He's uh, been on the team a lot longer uh, since 2014, and he actually returned after an almost eight-and-a-half-year absence uh, to sub into two games and appear on the bench 
uh, for four. However, he was not selected for the last two matches. So uh, um, uh, a little less likely uh, probably than the others. Uh, so there we have it. Uh, Li Ke, uh, uh, probably a starter, I would say. And Wang Chang Yun, um, maybe a starter. Uh, the other ones, if they do uh, get selected, would probably be uh, uh, on the bench starting on the bench okay and uh, con kind of continuing on with the central midfield there um we have uh, the central midfielders so i will uh, introduce them by name and then talk about the situation so we have a likely candidate in wu ji and also in zhu jin and then a possible candidate in wang kui ming and uh, I'm just going to uh, throw in the name as, uh, of He Chow as a possible but unlikely candidate here. And we won't talk about him. We'll uh, uh, bring it back up if he makes it into the squad. So let's look at these uh, players. No, let's look at the situation first. So again, defensive and central midfielders are a bit of a mix and match. And... Um, uh, Overall, we have uh, the captain, Wu Ji, uh, starting less and less uh, with some of the other players we've been talking about coming in more. So uh, nevertheless, we still consider Wu Ji uh, a likely candidate because he's the captain. But in fact, he started only one of the last six matches. Um, over the last three matches, he subbed in to the first two and then was on the bench for the most recent one. Uh, so not being used as much, but um, uh, we think he will be called up. He was part of the Asian Cup in 2015 and in 2019. So uh, a veteran with the team with 86 caps is uh, Wu Ji. The other likely candidate is Zhu Jin. And um, he's been with the team since 2021 and has 10 caps. And... Uh, he started eight of their 11 games uh, from in 2022 and 23. Sorry, that should be uh, 15 games. Eight of their 15 games. Uh, he wasn't selected for five, but most concerningly, those include the last two matches. Uh, so we would have had him as a definite candidate, except he missed the two uh, October 2023 matches. I think the other three matches that he missed were the EAFF uh, Asian Cup. So um, still we consider Zhu Jin a likely candidate. And um, more of a starter than Wu Ji. Uh, the possible candidate is Wang Kui Ming. So he's been coming into the team uh, more recently. Um, he got his first appearance on the bench uh, in October 2021. And over the last two years has started two games uh, and subbed in for two. Um, but again, those are more recent games. So kind of coming into the squad is Wang Kui uh, Ming. And then, uh, yeah, He Chao will just uh, kind of leave as a name on the list and then talk more about him if he comes into the picture more. So that's it for the uh, defensive and central midfielders. And now let's move on to... Um, well, we usually talk about left midfielders and right midfielders, but uh, with the formation they have, they don't really use these players because the left backs and right backs come up to be wingers uh, and the, um, uh, the left wingers are basically left attacking midfielders, as we'll see shortly. So uh, we actually have no coded players as a left midfielder, just one who was off the squad, uh, who we consider off the squad, um, which we won't mention here. We'll bring them back in. And uh, on the right midfielder, same thing. Uh, we do have the veteran Hao Jun Min. Uh, he was coded as a right midfielder, but he hasn't appeared uh, since March 2022. So we're not uh, putting him on the list. We consider him off the squad. So actually, we're going to move on to... Uh, left wingers and i'm going to handle um left wingers and left attacking midfielders as one 
So as we said, the uh, left and right wingers, the actual ringer, winger role is played by the left and right backs. So these would be uh, the um, left and right attacking midfielders. Beginning on the left, uh, we have uh, Chen Pu as a likely candidate, uh, but probably a substitute. Uh, all of these players I'm going to talk about on, on the left wing and left attacking midfielders are used uh, fairly smatteringly, so it looks like the manager has some decisions to make. Uh, Chen Pu, uh, his only start was as a centre forward, and he was subbed out at halftime. However, he has been called up uh, quite a bit, uh, subbed in for five games and on the bench for two over the last eight games. So uh, we think he's likely to be called up, uh, but will be a substitute uh, if he is called up, and maybe uh, as a forward rather than as a, a left attacking midfielder. We have three, uh, four candidates as uh, possible candidates, so I'll go through the names first. Uh, the first one is Wei Shi Hao. Uh, the next is Lin Liang Min. Next is Fang Hao, and finally Liu, Bi, uh, Liu Bin Bin. So let's go back to Wei Shi Hao. Um, he is uh, uh, more of an attacking midfielder when he's been on the field. He started uh, three of their 11 games over the last two years, was subbed in for two and on the bench for one. So not selected for uh, nine matches there. And um, he did start the last game, and that was the first time he's been on the field since March of 2023. So again, another player maybe being tried out uh, in the position. So he's been on the team since 2017, uh, and he was a substitute in the uh, 2019 Asian Cup. He didn't actually get on the field. The next possible candidate is Lin Liang Min. And he's new to the team since 2023, uh, just four caps and one goal. And he got his first cap, uh, cap in March 2023 and started, um, uh, started three of the remaining games, uh, subbed in for two, but then not selected for the last three matches. So, um, again, a lot of uncertainty here, uh, Lin Liang Min, but we still consider him possible. Uh, Fang Hao uh, seemed to be off the team, actually. He got his first cap in the EAFF Cup, East Asian Cup, in July 2022. And he started four games. Three of those were in that cup. Uh, started, um, so really, uh, for the senior team, just started one game, uh, subbed in for one. Uh, but he's been with the under-23 team, so we think uh, he does have a chance of getting on to the senior team. Uh, we thought he was off the team, but he came back in October 2023 and got a start and a substitute appearance. So um, uh, he seems to be coming into the squad, and uh, uh, we'll see uh, in the November games if he's called up. Finally, uh, Final possible candidate is Liu Bin Bin, and um, he had started two of their 15 games over the last two years, uh, subbed in for four and on the bench for one. Uh, however, he wasn't selected for the last four matches, so he looked like he was a, a good candidate uh, until the fall here and uh, hasn't been called up since June. Uh, okay, so uh, in terms of starters, um, None of these uh, look like they're definite starters. Uh, um, Chen Pu is a likely candidate, but um, definitely a substitute. And all of the others have played so kind of smatteringly that we can't uh, put a finger um, on which one is kind of uh, uh, looking the more likely. Maybe November will shed some light on that. Okay, moving over to the right side, it's... Uh, it's um, the opposite situation, excuse me, I just got a pause and cough here. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's the opposite. We have a definite candidate over here, and that is the veteran Wu Lei. And we'll come back to him. We also have a likely um, 
candidate in Ji Peng Fei. And uh, I'm just going to put um, Bad, uh, Bad Dunn uh, on the list as a possible but unlikely candidate, but we won't talk much uh, about him because um, he doesn't seem likely. So again, here it's usually a right back who plays the role of a right winger. So these players are more like right attacking midfielders. And actually Wu Lei uh, plays in various positions up front. He's played as a uh, right forward and as a central attacking midfielder. Uh, some sources code him as a secondary striker. It's a bit difficult to pin down his position. So Wu Lei has been with China since 2010, and he has 86 caps and an impressive 32 goals. And um, he was on the team for the uh, 2015 and the 2019 Asian Cups. Uh, so he got 12 of their 39 goals in World Cup qualifying, so a very important scorer uh, for the team. He started 10 of their 15 games over the last two years and uh, wasn't selected for... Um, uh, for three others, uh, for sorry, for five others, but those included the three EAFF Cups, which I believe he was injured for. Um, oh, Wu Lei, a definite candidate. A likely candidate is Xi, uh, uh, Xi Peng Fei, and uh, he will probably be a substitute, but um, he returned after an almost three and a half year absence in March of 2023 to start uh, two of their remaining eight games. Um, and uh, he was subbed in for four and on the bench for two others. So even though he doesn't start much, he's uh, being called up consistently, which is why we have him as a likely candidate. He's been with the team since 2019 and has nine caps. But as you can see by the light gray uh, um, font of his name, uh, he hasn't played in an international tournament. Okay, and we'll leave Pa done uh, for part two if he appears. And let's move on to the forwards. Uh, we include, include attacking midfielders uh, at this point, but uh, we've already covered some of them uh, with the left and right attacking midfielders there. And actually, we have no candidates as uh, attacking midfielders. We just have two players who were off the squad. Uh, they haven't uh, appeared enough to make the list here. And same with secondary strikers. We saw that Wu Lei um, uh, is sometimes coded as a secondary striker, but we've covered him. And we only have one player there who seems to be off the squad. So we go directly to uh, forwards here. And we have two likely candidates in forwards. One of them uh, is Elkerson, and his uh, Chinese name is really just a variation on his uh, Brazilian name, Ai Kaysan. And um, the other candidate uh, likely level is Tan Long. Tan Long. And then we have two candidates at the possible level, Wang Ziming and Zhe Wei Jun. Uh, so let's go through those players. So Elkerson was out uh, for 19 months, and I'm not sure. He wasn't injured as far as I know, uh, but out for 19 months and came back in June 2023 and uh, started five of their remaining six games and uh, was not selected for one other. That was the first game in October. So he uh, seems almost a definite candidate, especially given the lack of other options here. And uh, for whatever reason, he was out. He is back. And uh, uh, we just marked him down uh, from definite to likely because we're not really sure why he was uh, out of the squad. Uh, the other one is 35-year-old Tan Long. Um, and he started five of their uh, 15 games over the last two years. So he does start some games. Uh, he was on the bench for four of those. He's a young, uh, no, he's 35 years old, but for some reason was with the under 23 team for two games. I wonder if he was uh, kind of coaching there uh, and not selected for three others. 
Uh, anyway, uh, definitely, um, they may start with two forwards. They are uh, sometimes have two forwards in the lineup, so he may get a start there. But definitely, he seems uh, secondary to Elkerson uh, there. Okay, and the two possible candidates. Uh, the first is Wang Ziming, and he has been with the team since 2019 and has just four caps. He also returned after an absence. He came back in June 2023 and didn't start any of their uh, games, remaining games, but he was subbed in for three and on the bench for one. However, he was uh, not selected for the last uh, two matches, so not called up in October. Uh, and finally, we have Ji Wei Jun, and he's brand new to the squad, uh, got his first cap right here in October of 2023. He didn't start, he actually just subbed in for one minute uh, and was on the bench for the other game, but um, uh, brought into the squad. He's actually not that young. He is uh, 25 years or 26 years old. No, 25 years old. So, uh, but anyway, new to the squad. And again, we have a whole bunch of players who uh, have been um, uh, with the squad, but not playing over the last uh, basically two years or 18 months or so. But we'll leave them off the list and bring them back uh, if um, if we have to. Of course. Uh, the two veterans who've left the team, Yu Dabao and uh, Gao Lin, um, are, uh, are also on this list. There's uh, not much chance of them being called back, but who knows, sometimes players do come back for tournaments. Uh, okay, so let us move on to uh, part three uh, of this podcast. So... Um, we're going to do two things here, closing thoughts, and then we will look at what's coming up in, uh, sorry, in part two of the podcast. So we'll call this uh, section three, uh, uh, section three, the closing of this podcast. So some closing thoughts. Well, over the course of, um, uh, over the course of doing this podcast, um, I, I see that there's a lot of experimentation happening here, especially in the October uh, games. So that's added a bit of confusion. Uh, players not selected for those games who had been selected before or coming into those games having not been selected for a long time. So uh, it made us a little less confident about... Um, you know, who the definite, likely, impossible candidates are. And uh, it kind of stands to reason in retrospect because the manager had very little time to work with the senior squad. He's probably more familiar with the uh, youth squads, having worked with them. And um, he also worked with them during the East Asian Cup, where most of the players were uh, from the under-23 team. So he is... Uh, we see bringing a few of those players into the senior team or at least trying them out. But in terms of working with the senior team, he's only had eight games. Uh, those were two in March, two in June, two in September, and two in October. So we can see a bit of a furious scramble uh, to figure out his players um, and his starting lineup too. So he will have the November games. A lot of pressure there. They're very important games. The first World Cup 2026 qualifiers and against fairly tough teams, especially South Korea. So uh, I'm expecting to see more changes there. Uh, they don't actually have any friendly scheduled after that. I'm sure they will schedule uh, some down the road. But really, these November games are the ones where he really has to uh, do a, hot, a lot of heavy lifting to work out who his squad is and make some firm decisions there. Okay, and let's take a look at what we will do in part two, probably in... Uh, uh, mid to late December when we do part two of this. So we're going to we're going to go through the squad, uh, the list of candidates that we built here, and we will uh, make note of any notable non-selections and make note of any surprise inclusions. I should say the first thing we'll do is uh, look and see which of the players made the squad and which ones didn't. 
Uh, but we will point out notable selections, surprise inclusions, any new players uh, like the forward we just saw that come in late, and then any uh, updates on injuries. Um, uh, uh, for example, the uh, player who had the uh, the scary sounding spinal injury, uh, we'll see if that continues uh, into the Asian Cup. Okay, but that is it for part one, and we hope you will uh, enjoy, and see you next time. Bye-bye. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank Navur Avicham and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap.